Welcome to the Mosquito Steve Radio Show on Talk Radio 1190. It's more than just mosquito talk. Mosquito Steve will talk about natural products, organics, good business practices, and more. And now, here's your host, Mosquito Steve. Oh, I was waiting for Mosquito Steve to come in. Hi, everybody. This is Mosquito Steve. Welcome to our show. Um, I am joined here today by Meg Curry. Hello, Meg. Hello, everybody. Y'all know Meg. Meg's, she's an iHeart Media girl, and um, and I don't know much about her other than she sells radio stuff, so there you go. <laughs> um, anyway, so welcome, Meg, and uh, okay, everybody, so it's fall. Here it is, yes. October, Beautiful State weather. Fair. Yep. Okay, so I got to tell you, before we start, do anything else, October West Nile virus numbers tend to go up a little bit. And that's because everybody thinks it's October. We don't have mosquitoes in October. Yes, we do. This is Texas. So we have mosquitoes sometimes till Christmas. Sometimes they don't go away all season. Um, I've had Christmases. I think last Christmas we had mosquitoes, if I remember right. So um, so the thing is, as long as there's mosquitoes, there's West Nile virus. As long as there's mosquitoes, there's the threat of Zika, so uh, it's best to just protect yourself. So uh, let's talk about the Zika virus in the West Nile. Here we go. We'll do some numbers here. So um, Dallas County, the Zika virus numbers are 35. 35 cases of the Zika virus in Dallas County. Now, how many of those came from mosquitoes in Dallas? That's a good question. How many? Zero. None. These were all sexually transmitted or they got the Zika virus elsewhere and traveled back to Dallas. So there are no local cases of Zika virus in Dallas. In fact, there are no local cases of Zika virus in Texas. In fact, (laughs) there are no localized cases of Zika virus anywhere in the United States except for Florida, right in the Miami area. So I mean, I guess that's good news for Dallas, except for those 35 people. That's exactly right. Well, that's why if you go to the Zika, to the CDC's Zika virus page, says, A, protect yourself and others. Okay, that's what I've been saying. Wear repellent. But then they go on to say, protect during sex and more. So learn how to prevent sexual transmission of Zika, especially if you and your partner or your partner is pregnant. So that's, that is, takes precedence. That is what's most prevalent on the CDC's website. It's because it is mostly sexually transmitted. So um, if you live in Puerto Rico, it's a different story. If you're listening to us in Puerto Rico, well, welcome. We're glad you're here. But you've got a different problem over there because uh, people that have Zika virus are wandering around outside getting bit by a mosquito. Now, if you're with a friend and you're hanging out outside and a mosquito bites them and then come and bites you, and then you find out two days later your friend has Zika virus, should you be worried? No. No? You knew to say no because, you know, why would I be asking I'm that? I'm just trying to follow that. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. So it take, once the mosquito bites somebody with the Zika virus, it takes a few days for them to actually be a carrier. So, um, so it's not an immediate thing. So, all right, so uh, the locally acquired cases of Zika virus right now in Florida, 59. 59. Wow. So it is getting up there. It's not the epidemic that we thought it was going to be. Uh, Travel-associated cases reported in the United States, 3,565. Uh, now, here's here's a good contrast. U.S. territories, that includes Puerto Rico okay. and Virgin Islands, places like that, 21,988 cases of locally acquired Zika Wow. versus 59 here. So that is why that's why it's so important for people just don't travel there. That's it. If you're planning on going to Florida, hey, go to Colorado instead for now and go to Florida later. Right. How about that? And so um, or if you go, how about this? Wear mosquito repellent and don't go in the areas where there are where there's Zika virus or even better, go if you're not pregnant or if you're a guy. But if you're a woman that wants to get pregnant or is pregnant, then don't go to Florida. Don't go to Puerto Rico. Don't go to Rio de Janeiro. Don't, you know, 
It seems so logical to me, but maybe I'm just simplifying it too much. No, I wouldn't think so. Are you wanting to get pregnant anytime soon? <laughs> no. Are your cats pregnant? I have one cat, and no, she's not pregnant. You do have a boyfriend, though, so you, y'all don't y'all aren't, haven't talked about having babies? Anyway, so I have a question for you about Zika. Wait a minute. You didn't answer my question. Y'all haven't talked about having babies? <laughs> that is off radio t- conversation. Uh, <laughs> You're bad. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I do have a question, though. Um, I don't want to know off the radio, by the way. <laughs> so if you're not going to answer here, I don't care. Okay, cool. Um, so we're speaking about Zika. What about some of the other um, problems that people have had with mosquitoes in the past? Like, the I can never say it right, but like chikungunya? Chikungunya. So you. actually, I've actually... And West Nile? So West Nile virus here. I've got some numbers right here. Here are the West Nile virus numbers for this area. Oh, there it is, right in front of my face. Just digging through this. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm out of it today. So it's been a rough week. And I, you know what's weird? I just, I, I started thinking maybe I might have Zika or something. I really did. Um, but it could be these are, you know, lingering symptoms of West Nile. I just could not get enough sleep. And it didn't matter if it was five hours or 12 hours. I was so exhausted all week long. All I want to do is go to bed. That's all I want to do. So, um, anyways, so that's that's my personal problem. Just thought you guys <laughs> might want to know about my personal self Especially here. So, okay, so West Nile virus. Here we go. Here's the numbers. We have a total of 44 cases in Dallas County. So, of those, 28 are the neuroinvasive kind. So that's the kind that often you have to be hospitalized. Hop- hop- You have to be around a bunch of bunnies. They hop all over you. You have to be hospitalized or you could die from the neuroinvasive kind. So 28 cases of the neuroinvasive kind in Dallas County. So um, that's a lot. That is a lot, people. That's, uh, I mean, it may not sound like a lot when you're talking about, you know, two million, two and a half million people, but um, a lot of these are in neighborhoods like Highland Park and places like that, University Park, where they think that they're immune from stuff like this. You're not. Uh, Tarrant County, you've got 28 cases of uh, West Nile virus. 17 of those are neuroinvasive. And then Denton County, you got 14 cases, six of which are neuroinvasive. Collin County, um, I don't know why I just assumed Collin was under Dallas, but it would probably be its own county. So, okay. So, all right. So, Collin County has 15 cases, and six of those are neuroinvasive. So, what does this tell us? Hey, how about wearing a repellent when you're going to go outside? Yeah, protect yourself. I would not wear DEET if I were you. If you wear a DEET product, uh, if you're only going to be outside, if you're going to the mailbox, sure, put some DEET on because it's going to last about 45 minutes. But uh, but if you really want to be protected, go to MosquitoSteve.com and order some Mosquito Steve spray-on repellent. Or you can find it at many fine retailers like Nicholson Hardy, Gecko Hardware. Um, there's a lot of good ones out there. Brumley Gardens. I know I'm forgetting somebody I should talk about, but I, I can't think now. So, so anyways, uh, so uh, how long would you suggest wearing your your product? Oh, refreshing it, I, su- I suppose. If you're going to be out all day. Well, if you're going to be out all day and you've got Mosquito Steve on, you probably need to respray about every three to four hours. Um, I will tell you. Than sunblock. So next year we we are we're going to be even better. Next year's even better. So um, um, I'm just going to tease you that much. That's all I can tell you right now. And we got a new product. We got another new product coming out next year, so it's really exciting. But, yes, where uh, Mosquito Steve, you spray it on, um, and if you spray it really heavy, you can probably go six, seven hours without having to retreat. So uh, retreat. Now, here's the deal. What do women do wrong when they put on repellent? Oh, yeah, you're not supposed to pat it like perfume. You don't pat it. You don't rub it in. Don't rub it in. Y'all always want to rub it in. What is that? Well, it's because it smells so nice. No, you know, we were talking about insects and the female insects and male insects. It's like a female, like you're a praying mantis or something. Y'all like to (laughs) rub your arms together. You're crickets. See, that's why why there's a difference. Y'all are more insect-like than males are. 
Okay. That's what <laughs> that could be taken a couple different ways. It it is, and y'all, that's why. Because you were asking about why why do the females always kill off the males and in, in the insect world? Like, I don't think we're far from that. A perfect example. Of I that. don't think we're far from that in the the human world either. <laughs> I really don't. I think it's coming, and uh, um, and you know what? If we vote, f- put in the big H in office. Guess what? That's what it's coming to. She's going to start killing off males. That's what's going to happen. And y'all haven't read about that? It's true. It's really true. And you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> We're doomed. Now, we are. Now the FBI is going to investigate Mosquito Steve. Uh, ooh, ooh. Or I could just end up dead. Ooh. That that uh, that happens. Us? That happens when you cross the path of the big H. <laughs> um, so, and we're not talking about herpes. We are talking about Hillary. Okay, look, it's my final radio show, so I might as well <laughs> go out on a limb here and and go nutty. So that's what we're going to do. As long as we don't have to dump anything, we're okay. So, um, anyway, so if you don't know, if you've not heard, yeah, Hillary wants to kill all males, and uh, so uh, tell your friends, pass I'm, it on. I'm just going to say I don't know if that's true because she didn't kill Bill, and I think a lot of people wanted to kill him at one point. So, Well, that's because Bill helped her get where she was. Uh, he was just a piece of furniture to her. It's not like there was ever any love. Good God. She slept with more women probably than she slept <laughs> with Bill. I don't think there's anything to that Bill thing at all. I don't think it's going to last. <laughs> so uh, once she gets in office, she doesn't need him anymore. So look for him to be so, killed okay, so, soon after. So she could possibly be not only the first woman president ever, but also the first divorced president. How about the first murderer president? Oh God! Well, she would be the first <laughs> criminal. Oh, somebody's calling in. We're in trouble. We're yep, in trouble. All yep, right, yep. we're going to come back after these uh, words from our sponsors. Yep. Thank y'all for listening to the Mosquito Steve Show. Welcome back to the Mosquito Steve Radio Show. Howdy, everybody. This is Mosquito Steve. This is the final Mosquito Steve show. I feel like like the world's going to end or something. This is Aww. a world-ending show. Hey, listen, hey, if you hey, have questions. We don't know it's the last show. We're just taking a pause. Yes. Well, oh, that's true. It's the last show of the season. We know that, probably. Oh, that's not the right noise for Mosquito, is it? No, no, that's... uh, Well, Mosquitoes, yeah, they do. That's what Mosquitoes sound like. Okay, so, hey, folks, if you have a question for us, um, or if you just want to say goodbye for the season, 214-787-1190 or 817 787-1190. Seven eight seven eleven ninety. Yeah, it's actually I don't, it's right, right, there in, right, in, my, uh, right yeah. in front of my face. Two one four seven eight seven eleven ninety or eight one seven seven eight seven eleven ninety. Um by the way, you can hear us on iHeart um radio. On the app. Streaming mm-hmm. live all over the world right and now. And so there was a gentleman that just called that had some questions about Zika. We're sorry that we weren't able to connect with you. You're welcome to call back. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you call right before a commercial, we're gonna go to the commercial even though nobody pays for that. What I should have done is just go Screw the commercials. Let's talk to our call-in. So so call back. So call back. Call back. We want to hear from you. I had a question about Zika virus. And so uh, please call back. So I'm looking at this map uh, from the CDC of the West Nile virus. So just so you all know, because I th- don't think everybody realizes the West Nile virus, the how prevalent it is in the U.S. So West Nile virus has been here since 1999. And it is usually stronger in one part of the country than the other. Right now, it looks to me, uh, I'm looking at a map of California, and it looks like we've got some counties in California um, and Arizona. Really? Where the West Nile virus count is really, really high. And it's funny because people always, they always say, well, I'm from Arizona. We didn't have mosquitoes. Yeah, you did. You've got mosquitoes in Arizona, and you got them in California. And so um, there are... One, two, three, four. There's like four states that have not had West Nile virus. All the other states in the contiguous U.S. um, have had West Nile virus. So if you live in Washington State, yes, you have West Nile virus there. so, So the four that don't have it, what are they doing differently? Well, you know, I don't know because it's weird because it's they're saying North Carolina doesn't have any West Nile virus. And I find that very interesting. So you got it in South Carolina, you got it in Tennessee, you got it in New Jersey, you got it in Pennsylvania. I don't know why. Do Pennsylvania people talk like that? I 
I didn't mean to be rude to Pennsylvania people. That's um, you got in Ohio, Illinois, uh, everywhere but Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, and it looks like Rhode Island does not have West Nile virus. I think they're lying. I think they're lying too. Or is that Delaware? Maybe it's Delaware. They don't even write Delaware in. It must be Delaware. Delaware huh. sounds like they're full of liars. <sighs> It's a really small state. <laughs> Let's Will. not make all the Delaware people mad today. I don't mind making Hillary voters mad, but I do not want to make the Delaware people mad today. <laughs> In Delaware, Democratic? I don't know. I, I don't do either. not know. You know, this is actually the CDC. Yes. Okay, let me look at the CDC map of who's Democratic, and it looks like... <laughs> really? No. <laughs> Um, that's, so anyways, that's where you're, you're going to go. I'm not going there. We're not talking politics. Good gosh. You can listen to any radio you, station you in already, Dallas. No, I haven't. Politics. I was making some jokes. That's not politics. That's making jokes. So, uh, all right. So let's talk more about Zika and West Nile virus here in Dallas. Uh, if you live in Collin County, you just got sprayed a couple of days ago. Yeah. If you live in Dallas, you know what the other night? They were spraying in Dallas, and they stopped right in front of my house. Oh, wow. And they just sat there, and I thought, oh, my God, no. he's going to get out of his truck and come in and knock on my door. It's the FBI. So um, I'll tell you, so I'm growing some new mosquitoes just because I, what I do is I scoop the larvae out, and I'll put them in my cage and so uh, so that I have more mosquitoes. i got a bunch of mosquitoes in my cage in my home. And um, I sound like Cartman there in my cage in my home. Uh, Anyways, <laughs> and so uh, – so anyway, so I've got, I go out and I scoop the larva out of the water and I put it in my cage. And so I just want y'all to know I'm not growing mosquitoes outdoors, but it didn't kill the larva. The spray that the city did right at my house did not kill the larva. Is there, who are you waving at? I there? was waving at Will. I'm Facebook living. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, I wasn't paying attention, my bad. No, very oh, Thanks, Will. I, I was yeah, watching the live stream, actually. He's not paying attention <laughs> to the show. You were watching the live stream and you missed me. Video All you have to do, you're it's only behind by a couple of seconds. Your <laughs> only job is to pay attention to the show. <laughs> right? I was paying attention just through a different medium. Well, okay, so back to spraying. Yes. Uh, last we spoke, you were talking about Dallas, and you said that they sprayed early. Yeah, well, that was out of the airplanes. That yeah. is, it looks like I think we're going to probably get through this season without them spraying out of the airplanes. They got real nervous there, uh, but we're not probably not going to spray out of the airplanes. But you never can. I can't put it past Clay Jenkins and um, oh God, Doctor, what's his name? I can't even think of his name anymore. Zach Thompson. There we go. Okay. You can't put it past them. They made side spray October. They'll spray on Halloween. That's what they'll do. And then they'll tell everybody, go inside at 9 because we're going to spray, and then they'll spray at 8. So, um, okay, if you're, I'm making lots of enemies today. That's, I may not make it on the you, drive home. You know what? You just speak in the truth. I am. We speak the truth here. Okay, if you are in Dallas County in Duncanville, guess what? Sunday, October 2nd, that's tomorrow. Yeah. If you're in the East Little area, they're going to spray from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. So do not be outside. Bring your cats indoors. Bring your cats indoors, people. Cats don't usually um, process these pesticides very well. Um, it's weird, though. You know, I've been coughing. It just dawned on me. You know what? Maybe the coughing is from the spring. Probably. It's like if I'm, if I'm around cigarette smoke, it makes me cough. Yeah. And I smoked for 20-something years. Uh, but still, it makes me cough uh, when I'm around cigarettes. I wonder if pesticides are making me cough. Maybe. And then there's been the rain and, you know, all kinds of new stuff that's popped up. So, hey, I have a question. So if, uh, you know, if I'm curious to know if they're going to be spraying my neighborhood, what I, where would I find that information? Well, you can find – here's what I do. I Google North Texas ground spraying schedule. Uh, but I know that NBC5, local NBC5, puts it on their website. You can just click on the link, North Texas Ground Spraying Schedule, or you can just Google that, and, okay. and it'll come up. So uh, Sunnyvale, Sunnyvale, Monday the 3rd, you're going to get sprayed from 9 p.m. to south to 5 a.m. This is um, south of Town East Boulevard, of, south of East Town East Boulevard, on the north Collins Road on the east, Parkview Drive, and E Trip Road on the south, and North Beltline Road on the west. Now that's five different ways of directions, and you only have four directions. I don't know how they did that, that but that sounds confusing. Yeah. Hey, they're they're saying thanks for letting them know where they're going to be spraying. Yes, yes, that's it. People so want just to know this stuff. just be careful out there. Uh, bring your cats in and your dogs um, um, at 9 p.m. if you're in Sunnyvale 
on Monday evening because you do not want them to be around this stuff. Other than that, looks like everybody else has already been sprayed. That's all that is on the schedule. Um, but, you know, it surprised me. I didn't know that we were going to get sprayed. Oh, Sheldon's Shel- on. How Sheldon, sh- hi, say hi, Sheldon. Sheldon and Will Hi, gang. Seats. Yeah, hey. Will had to run out for What's a second. Oh. What do you have to run out for? <laughs> Bathroom. Uh, he forgot his chamber pot. <laughs> oh, good Lord. <laughs> You know, there are people listening to us right now. By the way, see, the only person that I know is listening to, to us is my dad. Hi, Dad. So that's you a shout-out to my I dad, Wendell. your dad. He was a very nice guy. He is a nice guy. I forgot he was up here. Yeah. yeah. I should have had segment. him on today. That's what we should have done. Let's Dad's call coming. him. Yeah, come on up here, Dad, if you want. <laughs> no, I mean, call uh, him on the phone. We could have brought. He could have brought Jake, too. That would be the thing, bring Jake on here. Jake's a little mad, so my dad's wife is out of town uh, for the weekend. Uh, she's in New Orleans, and I uh, love New Orleans. I want to go back there. Uh, I love food. Any place that makes good food, I want to go there. I love food. And so New Orleans got great food. So um, And dessert. Cafe but is the my best. dad's dog, Jake, who's my little brother, he's a little upset with uh, with us because he thinks that she's not coming back. Aww. She goes away for – Dee Dee leaves town for – a day and you know of course jake thinks well wait we were friends and then all of a sudden she's gone and she's never coming back and why would she do that to me and uh, i understand i've done that before with girls <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> just wait, wait, kidding wait, wait, wait. just we, kidding we were talking about the dog and not yeah girls. we were talking about dogs yeah. not girls I would, <laughs> look if you're going to talk about girls and girlfriends with me it's going to be a very we're we're done that's all it takes i mean there's my <laughs> my track record is not very strong when it comes to dating. So um, so you're saying you're challenging us to find you a date, then? Is that what you're saying? Uh, you know, the girl I had on last week, that would be great, because I know she's not listening. I wouldn't say that if I thought she was listening, but she was a cutie, wasn't she? Wasn't she, Will? Yeah, she's pretty good looking. Her. She mm. was pretty what? I said she was pretty good looking. Oh, okay. I was, yeah, I missed her, huh? That's uh, I heard something different than what you said. I'll have to go check it out. She is, uh, anyway, she's a sweetheart. She <laughs> uh, Roger a- says he wants us to keep talking about girls. Really? I think, yeah. Okay. So, um, so well, here's the thing. It's, it's, I, I, I've gotten so overweight that I'm really conscientious of it and, and so, or conscious of it. So I don't, um, you know what? I kind of just don't feel like dating because I don't like myself. And I'm thinking, well, any girl that would like me, she can't be worth much, right? So um, I would say the opposite. If she doesn't like you for who you are, then she's not worth your time. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm with Meg. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're with Meg? Yeah. Does her boyfriend know that? No. <laughs> oh, my God. No or wonder his, you didn't want to talk about his it. his girlfriend. You probably didn't want to make Will doing? mad yeah. by talking about, oh, my God. Does Will even know that you have a boyfriend? Yes. Will knows I have a boyfriend. Okay. All right. <laughs> Wait, What? <laughs> Now what, Sheldon? What is Sheldon laughing about? He's laughing at you. What you just said? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! So back to you. Back to me. So we should. Th- this is a goal, right? Like we've got. Today's the first of October, so we have three months. Maybe we could do this as a goal before New Year's Eve could be your first date. New Year's Eve could be my first date. Yes, that's, I mean that would be a know, great story. Here's the deal: I would. I'm more interested in finding investors than I am in dates. Right okay, now. So, so anybody out uh, in the Radio Land, Facebook Land, iHeart oh Radio Land, gosh. Mosquito Steve is looking for send investors. Send me a send me a link. To, yeah, yeah. Friend me on Facebook, Mosquito Steve on Facebook, and uh, send me a FaceTime or. Uh, here's the deal: send me a tryout video. How about that? A one minute tryout video. All right, you guys, this is getting ridiculous. We've gotten way off base. I don't know why we're talking. What are we talking about? Nobody wants to hear about my dating life. All right, we're (laughs) going to take a break here for a minute, and uh, we'll be right back. Thanks for listening to the Mosquito Steve Show. The Mosquito Steve Radio Show is back. Here's your host, Mosquito Steve. Hi, everybody. It's Mosquito Steve here. So as you can tell by the music, I'm a lover, not a fighter. So, uh, yeah. So, um, I, you know, I do. I absolutely love women. I love women. The problem is I get these crushes and they last for, you know, decades. And so um, so there was a girl named Kim and then there's there's another Kim right so, now. So wait, are you saying you're like a hopeless romantic? I am a hopeless romantic. I really am. So. How about you say hopeful? Hopeful. Oh. Oh. Okay, welcome to the Dr. Meg Show. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in today on 
this beautiful Saturday afternoon. <laughs> we have another guest with us today. His name's Sheldon. Welcome, Sheldon. Well, thank you, Steve. This, this oh, we're going to do the NPR <laughs> radio. Weird. NPR radio. <laughs> okay, so um, so I just we let's just let's finish up. Look, if you got a question about mosquitoes, please call us 214-787-1190 or 817-787-1190. I think when I started talking about Hillary and started, um, we started fooling around. We lost, we lost uh, whoever called in, and he he wanted to. He, he hung up during the break. He didn't know. He might have been. He might have been a Hillary supporter. He, he just might have thought we just gone mad. Him. So, uh, so no, you you know what? No matter who you vote for, here's the deal. Come middle of November, we're all going to hopefully unify again, and we're going to care about the same thing. And hopefully by then we can start being friends again on Facebook. I know a lot of friends that are unfriending people because of all this. And, um, you know, it's just, come on, people. It's just there's no reason for people to be so angry and to call names and do stuff like that. That's what I don't get. It's really not necessary. Everybody should have a sense of humor about this. We should enjoy it. I know this is a very serious election. I do know that. And I know what's at stake, and that's why I'm voting the way I am. I hope that you know what's at stake and you're voting because you believe it's what's best for the country and not just because we need another blank president or we need another blank president. That's just let's you know what let's uh, I will tell you as a small businessman, this has been such a struggle and I've been so we formed Mosquito Steve in 2010 and uh, I've been bootstrapping. I've never had a significant amount of investment. And so uh, so it's been tough. And labor I've had of love. To, it has been a labor of love. I've had to have another job most of the years. This is the first year I'm trying to do it without uh, having a second job. And the jury's still out on whether that's going to be successful or not because I am – um, we're we're in trouble, you know. We gotta, you know. The thing is, mosquitoes Steve will survive, and these products will survive, and we're gonna do very well. But um, but it may be that I've got to take a job or something uh, to keep afloat until we get this thing uh, off the ground. And I thought we were there, and so this year didn't turn out like I'd hoped. But uh, but here's the thing: I've always put the products first because I knew that if we had the best products then eventually this would be successful. And so that's been their goal is to have the most effective mosquito products in the world. So if you want to read more about my story, you can go to mosquitosteve.com. So um, see, now we're not having fun anymore. I know Sheldon came here because he wants to talk about goyles and stuff. And yeah. so, uh, right? Sheldon, Sheldon, we should talk about your girlfriend. Okay. Well, we all know apparently that you're with Will now. So. No. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No. No. She's she. How many cats do you have? Seven. I have one. Oh, okay. She's got one. I got three dogs. Three dogs, really? Yeah. What kind? Three little miniature schnauzers. No way. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! I could just see you walking down the street with three schnauzers. Wait. Okay. What how a picture. How tall are you? Because you're a tall guy. About six and a half feet. Yeah. Yeah. Six and a half feet. Is yeah, that six he's, six he's or six, six five? Six feet and a half an inch. He's saying six foot five. Okay. <laughs> it just sounded weird. Yeah, I got three ten pound schnauzers. <laughs> I bet you they so they scream. That's the thing about miniatures. They, they scream. They got such yeah. loud. Oh ah! god. They sound like you're murdering somebody. <laughs> Did the police come to your house a lot? Oh no. the dogs? <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Oh they do. They do sound like that. I'm not kidding. Oh, they do. They're yappy little. They're loud. I don't know how you handle it. They're cute. That, that's <laughs> how I handle cute. it. It's the trade off there. They are cute. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's like, you know, my little brother, Jake. I mean, he's just as cute as I'll get out. You can't be mad at him long, even though he's such, oh my God, he just will not leave you alone sometimes. And then other times you want him to be cuddly and he won't be cuddly. And, <laughs> You know, I'll be scratching him. He backs his butt up to me. You know how the dogs do. And so he scratched their little butt. And then all of a sudden, well, then if you scratch too long, he's like a cat. You know, cats are like that. You know, they, they warm up. They get right next to you and you start rubbing them. And then all of a sudden they turn on you and start scratch Yeah. You start look scratching right you. Yeah. Nice little well, scratch. See, my, my dad's <laughs> dog, Jake, that's what he does. He'll, he'll back his butt up to you. But if you scratch him too long... Let me tell you, he starts growling. He started nipping at me last night. He's he's old. Now. You he's should like, stop scratching him. Right? He's 13 years old. Well, I know. But what, 
didn't he just tell me? He doesn't need to bite me. That was his way of telling you. That was his way of telling you. Nip, nip, nip. nip, nip, nip. Well, that's true. I will tell you. So he'll he'll start growling, and I keep going because I do. I want to see how far (laughs) he goes. So I hope hope you had it coming. That sounds like you. (laughs) <laughs> so, uh, so I don't have a dog of my own because I, first of all, I live in a place that I can't have a dog. Uh, but um, I love dogs. I absolutely love dogs. I think I would love a cat. They're pretty amazing. If the cat acted like a dog. My cat acts like a dog. Mine does too. Yep. I have a friend that used to, oh, Will's got it. See, we forgot about it. Will. How many cats do you have? I just have one. None? Okay. But he acts like two. Y'all. I think y'all all, I think you've got, I think anybody that has one cat has Six or seven. No. <laughs> they don't hang around of, your back door and that would stuff. Be a lot of litter boxes. <laughs> yeah, I don't like cleaning, like cleaning mine up that a much. Lot of litter like, boxes. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I'll just so, stick with one cat. Have you ever sprayed mosquito seed on your cat, by the way? I have not. No, only on myself. Oh. You know, you can spray mosquito seed on your dogs, right? Mm-hmm. I do, actually. Okay. It's the, um, in fact, I just, um, God, where was I this week? Somebody just got a bunch of this stuff, and I was giving them instructions on how to get rid of fleas, and that's uh, they had bad fleas. It's like, this is the stuff. Mosquito Steve, the yard spray works great on fleas, gets rid of fleas. So, Have you ever uh, thought about doing doorways, like outside the doors? Oh, yeah, we Entrances do. That's what our door spray, that's what our yard sprays do. Oh, cool. Yeah, they spray around the doorways to keep the insects from coming in and out. The fleas, though, they're going to hang on to your dog, so they're going to make it inside. Yeah. So, uh, but if you spray the yard spray on your dog, uh, the fleas will literally die. They'll just fall to the ground dead. So, um, you know, we don't, I don't like to talk about killing things because my real goal is to repel things. But when it comes to fleas, I haven't met anybody that got their feelings hurt because we're killing fleas or chiggers. I don't know anybody that's like, I look, I'm weird, I know, for having a cage of mosquitoes in my house, but I don't know (laughs) anybody. It has a them? cage of chiggers yeah. or a cage of fleas. Yeah. And uh, I would not want to be You know what, though? That would be an awesome revenge on someone, though. Like, cage them all and then, like, you, you know, like the evil. It should be a new Marvel. <laughs> Remind me to the never flea? piss you off. Yeah. Flea like man, it, like Ant-Man, but flea no, man. No, Where he can hop from <laughs> pe- person to person. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Or just, you know, a cage of those and just, a, you know, a, release them on your arch enemy. Oh. Well, you know that fleas do carry diseases. You know, yeah. that's, they're an arthropod. So that's, uh, they carry diseases. There's, there's hundreds and hundreds of diseases that arthropods carry. Mosquitoes actually have about 150 pathogens. They're guessing, uh, but uh, but fleas carry diseases too. So uh, yeah, I don't like fleas. I can't stand them. Can't stand the little guys. No, yeah, they're gross looking. And the weird yeah. thing is, they like white. They like white. Yes. Huh? See, they're mosquitoes attractive. like black. Oh, and you're wearing black today. I am, they am. In fact, I've got to go count mosquitoes when I leave here today. So does anybody want to go count mosquitoes with me? No, no but so. you are wearing white shorts, so what? They're going <laughs> well, to come I'm wearing lighter shorts, can, but I will tell you, they'll, you they'll hover around my black mosquitoes. shirt, yeah. and then they'll hover around, you know, and they go back and forth. They, they get to where they, they, you get a bunch of them, and they're swarming around, and they'll swarm around your ankles, and then they get to where they're floating back and forth, and they're like looking at your leg, and that's what they're doing. They're heat sinking. They're looking for that vein. They're going to go in for the kill. So uh, they're going to go and get that blood. So, um, so I, I know you've mentioned this in the past. Uh, what is the lifespan of a mosquito? Roughly? So typically, it's usually about two weeks. Um, but uh, but female mosquitoes can hibernate during the winter, so they will they can survive for a longer period. So that's what happens when spring starts. Mosquitoes come from two ways. One of them is that. The female mosquito lays the um, eggs. If it's a floodwater mosquito, which is a Culex species, then they'll lay them under leaves, um, in bark, and places like that. And that the the eggs will dehydrate. They will just literally dehydrate. And then when they get wet in the spring, boom, there you go. You got a oh, mosquito. They go dormant. That's, yep. Please do that too. That's really so dirty. The other way that they do it, uh, they also the the eighty species will lay the eggs like just an inch above the water line. And then when the, when the lot water line raises, that's when they get wet, and then they'll come to life. <clears throat> the other way is that the females hibernate, and they're great hiders. This is what I keep telling people: is mosquitoes are great hiders. People are always asking, you know, will the misting system work? Well, you know, or people are complaining because their misting system isn't working, um, and that's because mosquitoes hide. So mosquitoes 
have have adapted. They know when rain comes, they hide. So why would they not know when you're misting to hide? They adapt really, really quickly. So it's the larval stage that's been sped up, not the lifespan of the mosquito, but the larval stage has sped up because of the drought here in Texas. And and, and it may go back, you know, maybe it'll go back. I, I don't know, because now we've got puddles that stick around. But and they both bite you, right? Female yes. and male? Well, no, males don't bite you. Okay, that's what Males I don't even have a thingy. Uh, <laughs> Proboscis. <laughs> so, sorry, I was, that was a... Uh, anyways, yeah, males don't have <laughs> males don't have anything to stick into you, uh, and it's 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 funny uh, to watch them have sex in the cage because it takes <laughs> okay, literally a split second, uh-huh. a split second. But they're they're doing this dance in the air. It's like it looks like they're fighting, and then all of a sudden um, they'll stop for a second, and boom, they touch butts, and boom, that's it. I'm sure it's not touching butts. Miss, I'm there's, sure there's a whole new side <laughs> business for you right there, mosquito <laughs> porno. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a more scientific name too. for it, too, than touching butts. I'm sure that's not – you can't have babies by touching butts. I hope no kids are listening to this right now. But, uh, oh, unless you're a mosquito. No. But anyways, they touch the ends of their their bodies, their, their thorax, whatever it is. Okay, well, thanks for tuning in to the Mosquito Steve Show. I'm sure we're not talking about anything you thought we would talk about today. So we'll be right back after this word. The Mosquito Steve Radio Show is back. Here's your host, Mosquito Steve. All I want is to have a little peace of mind. And thanks, Boston, for playing us back in there. So uh, welcome back to the Mosquito Steve Show. This is Mosquito Steve. I'm joined here with Sheldon and Meg. Hello. Hello. Okay, so um, anyway, so we've been, I've been a little bit immature. I have to apologize. I'm not usually like that. Well, actually, I am usually like that when I'm not on and the radio. it's so much fun. <laughs> so um, anyway, so I'm going to let you guys, you guys ask a question. Now, if you've got a question, please be sure and call us 214 or 817-787-1190. Otherwise, y'all have... You, Sheldon, you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I got a question. How, how did you get started with the mosquitoes? Okay, well, this, it all started when, back when I was a small child, no, I was a... Uh, I was actually, I was in the remodeling business. I had done these jobs as a marketer guy for dot-coms. And then the dot-com thing crashed. And um, and I had a little bit, I don't usually save a lot of money, but I had a couple of months that I didn't have to work. And um, I was sitting at home meditating. I'm not kidding. I was meditating, meditating, and, and wondering, what does God have planned for me? And people kept calling, and I'd say, leave me alone. I'm trying to figure out what to do. Well, they kept calling me and asking me to do service. So I opened a service business in 2001 called Mosquito Steve, not Mosquito Steve, service business called Steve Moore Service Company. We did $675,000 first year just by putting flyers on doors, and we promised no butt crack and stuff like that. And so, you know, we were going to be a little bit different and uh, ended up doing remodeling. One of my remodeling customers had a misting system, and we were working outside, not getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. And he said, you know, nobody in Dallas does this. I had to have somebody come in from East Texas to do this. And I was like, oh, my gosh, well, I'm going to go into the misting business. So I went in the misting business, and the the first few months I realized that, you know what, there's a lot of misinformation out there about it. So um, so I started looking at natural products way back then. So um that's what started it, and I started asking the right questions. That was it. As instead of trusting that that all the information I was getting, and I'm so glad I did because there is, I know guys right now that do that install misting systems, and they've got people spraying toxins and poisons six or seven times a day. That is so not just it's not overuse; it's illegal. And yet that's what they're doing. So um, some of those guys are my customers. So hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I want them to use natural products, and some of them are are starting to use natural products. And uh, that's what I'm here to do. I'm, I want to replace the toxins. And I think that someday we, we as a country are going to look at this and go, hey, you know what? This is not good for us. Let's stop doing this. And hopefully Mosquito Steve products will be right there and ready to go. Yeah, we need to uh, we need to get that. The cancer doctor to come back in here. I'd love for him to do some research and see if these chemicals are actually 
you know, affecting people in that way. Well, there were, there's actually studies that show that um, that it causes it can uh, high rates of, of uh, pesticides can cause autism. So uh, the, the rates of moms that have babies with autism are much higher in farming communities where they're close to a lot of pesticide sprays. So they've done studies in California like that. So, so there is some evidence, and not only that, it, it can malform the brain so that um, they're slower to learn. And, and uh, of course, we know that, that these things harm bees and bee colonies, and that's why it says on the label of these products – in case anybody tells you, oh, it's safe, it's safe, read the labels. The labels of the product say highly toxic to bees. So um, I, it just that's the thing. Highly toxic to bees um, says will kill fish, highly toxic to fish. So if you're killing bees and fish, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. It just it's such a short, you know, connection there. Surely people can realize if it's killing bees or fish, it's not good for the environment. It's probably not good for us, right? right yeah. And uh, permethrin, which is widely used, uh, pyrethroids is another way uh, word for it. It's the synthetic version of pyrethrins. Uh, they used to say on there that they don't in some cases, but they used to say on there toxic to, to cats. And the truth is, is cats have trouble processing. Their livers have trouble processing pyrethroids if they spray out of the airplanes that's what they're spraying is pyrethroids so great yeah great great <laughs> oh good so, for us. so what you're saying is you're like a modern day aaron brockovich of mosquitoes and awareness um i'm a modern day julia uh what's her name julia roberts version of aaron brockovich okay. she's much better looking than the real thing but um isn't that weird i've still got a crush on her for she, she's one of those for all these years I am uh, because I'm delusional because you know that's what alcoholics do. We we're delusional. We don't, don't usually live in reality, and uh, I've always thought that someday Julie and I would be fixed up somewhere, some way, somehow. I like that yeah. that <laughs> optimism. <laughs> See, so, I told you uh, you're hopeful. Yeah, so if you look like Julia Roberts, give me a call. <laughs> like me on Facebook. That's send, it. send in the <laughs> audition video, right, Steve? I don't know. Right. I really <laughs> like. My, I, I know my uh, my dad. Uh, I know my mom used to make fun of me for this. Anyways, I like skinny girls, you know. So my stepmom does that. Dee Dee does that. She doesn't understand why I like skinny girls. I like skinny girls. So. To each their own. Not meth girls, though. Let's be straight yeah. about that. <laughs> now, if you're into meth, then um, – so I like skinny girls that have teeth. How about that? Oh, boy. <laughs> skinny girls that aren't yellow and have teeth. Now, I shouldn't say that because I'm in recovery and I do care about people a lot. And if you're having a problem with meth, sure, I – can try and hook you up with my little help. <laughs> so I'm going to switch topics real quick. Just Go for it. We only have a, a yeah, little bit left in the show. Yeah, because I'm all over the place. So um, you're from Dallas. You grew up here. I am from Dallas. I grew up here. Yeah. And you uh, did you graduate from Lake Highlands? I graduated from Lake Highlands High School. Yeah. Uh, same place that, um, what's her name? What was her name back then? Uh, but uh, Morgan Fairchild. Oh, wow. Yeah. But she was, uh, what is it? Much older. Patsy McClinney. Much I think older was woman. her name at, in high school. I hope I didn't give away a secret there. But, uh, but yeah, yes, she is much older, but she's still holding together oh, pretty yeah, well. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then you uh, you ended up going to college at SMU? Well, I started out at Tech, so this is the okay. deep thing. I started off well, at Texas Raider. Tech. This is probably most people don't realize this. Tech can be heard on this station, by the way. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Texas Tech games can be heard on this station. I'm actually unless the one that you're in a blackout like I was when I was there. Um, so I was actually, I was a cheerleader at Texas Tech. Oh, wow. So, um, there's actually proof on my, if you're a friend of me, mine on Facebook, there's a photo in there of me cheerleading in my cheerleading outfit. And, um, uh, I loved, I loved cheerleading. I loved the bars there. I loved the drinking scene there. Uh, I didn't like going to class. And oh, yeah, so, um, they suggested I not come back cause I had a 1.4 and six hours out of about 32 hours I attempted and uh, so I came back, went to the hardest school ever, Richland College. I got to tell you, it was the hardest school I ever went to. You can't schmooze your teachers there, I guess, is no, the deal. It's, it's, I actually it's, had to do the work. It's well and uh, from there, I went to SMU, and I was at SMU when we had the best football team money could buy. And uh, and that was exciting. Uh, somehow I graduated from there, but I tell you, I was, I was still a mess. I was still uh, partying a lot and uh, – I thought that I was going to graduate from there and everybody was going to ask me to come work for them. And uh, it didn't work out that way. So 
<clears throat> anyways, that's uh, yeah, that's my career, uh, my legal, my educational career. SMU, eighty two. Woo. Okay, and so you uh, you also are, have become an entrepreneur. Yes. Yeah, and I did that just surely because I was tired of going from dot com to dot com, and um, my, my dad was an entrepreneur, so I really I it's I come by it naturally. Uh, he was a, a great salesman and an entrepreneur. And I learned those things from him. And uh, my sister has her own business. So, you know, it so does. It's a it family, runs in the family of entrepreneurs. It is. It's a you know, family of entrepreneurs. Yep. So where do you see yourself going next in the next chapter of Mosquito Steve? Uh, I would love for this to turn into um, a national product. I really would. And so I would like to be the guy that I'd like to be able to tell the truth, to tell people about pesticides, to tell people about saving bees and protecting themselves better and about the harsh chemicals. I'd love to have a national stage to do that. That's really what I'm after. I believe that, that um, uh, you know, you can be conservative and you can care about people. And uh, most of the conservative people I know care more about people than people give them credit for. Uh, most of them are not racist. We actually give to charities and, and volunteer our time. Uh, but at the same time, we, um, you know, with the people get knocked because they think conservative people can't be that can't care about nature. And we do. We care about nature. We care about bees and butterflies and uh, we care about kids and all kinds of stuff. So. Um, so, yeah, so I, I would like to have the national stage and be able to tell people the truth about pesticides. And I know that you aren't ready to uh, go into too much detail yet, but it sounds like you've got some pretty big people interested in your product. We do. Um, and I'll tell you, so um, if you haven't ever been to Earth Day, we've got another Earth Day coming up this April. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. I don't know if I'll be back on the air by then or not, but I will tell you, Earth Day is a lot of fun and it's very informative. I went to the kickoff for that the other night. They had 131,000 people there last year. Wow. Yeah, they were expecting 75,000. So that's awesome. Yeah. So I went to a deal the other night. Trammell Crow hosted it and did a little kickoff thing. And I was around all the Earth Day people. And um, so that I think that may be a stage where I'll get to do that. But we've got some we got some good people, um, you know, uh, got a lot of potential. I'm not able to say who they are right now, but uh, there is a lot good, of potential. Hopefully we'll hear happening. something this week. So Yeah, good things happening. Yeah, good things are happening. Uh, be sure and, and like me on Facebook. And uh, if you're watching my Facebook page, you'll be able to see what's going on. Just remember, people, it's October. We still have mosquitoes here. Please, please, please protect yourself. Wear mosquito repellent. Go to mosquitosteve.com to find out more about what's going on with me, with uh, pesticides, with uh, natural products. Um, like me on Facebook. Um, I think I'm on Instagram. And what's your and website stuff. one more time? Uh, mosquitosteve.com. M O S, not M E S, M O S Q U I T O S T E V E.com. And um, it, you can always send me an email, steve at mosquitosteve.com, and I will answer. So thanks, Sheldon. Thanks, Meg, for being on the air. Thank we you. are out of time, completely out of time. Thanks for listening to the Mosquito Steve Show. It's been awesome.